Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to take a look at systems of inequalities. We're going to start with a warm-up from previous material in Chapter 7. Find the partial fraction decomposition on 1 and solve the system on 2. Pause the video here until those are complete. All right, number 1, factor the denominator and then split it up into fraction with one of the factors here and one of the factors there. And then if we add these together, we're going to create a common denominator. So this one's missing an x plus 4, top and bottom. This one's missing x minus 1, multiply that top and bottom. And that numerator is going to equal that numerator. So as we set up the system, we've got x's. So a plus b equals 8. And then our constant, 4a minus b, is equal to 7. Solve the system. It's ready to add right now. 5a equals 15. So a is going to be 3. And then if you solve for b, you're going to get 5. And we get this. 3 over x minus 1 plus 5 over x plus 4. If you have these reversed, you might have this reversed. And you may have found out that a was 5 and b was 3, and that's fine. Uh, order here does not matter. Problem number 2. Solve the system. We can multiply the top equation by 2. So we get 9x is equal to 9. x equals 1. Substitute that back in. I think we get y equals 2. So our solution, x equals 1, y equals 2, we write as an ordered pair. Right, 7.5 systems of inequalities. A lot of this is material you've already seen, so we're going to kind of just focus in on some of the more relevant things and some of the stuff that's going to lead into the next lesson. So in terms of what we're doing with graphing an inequality is we're going to replace the inequality sign with an equal sign, graph the boundary function. And then we're going to use a dashed line, I usually say dotted line, for strictly less than or strictly greater than. And they saw a line for less than or equal to greater than or equal to. And then we are going to shade on one side of the, uh, the boundary curve or boundary line shade on one side, and that can be determined by doing a test point. Uh, we're going to first start out, though, with graphing just a single inequality and using technology to help us. So we're going to use a graphing calculator for this. y is greater than negative 10 divided by x squared plus x plus 4. So we're going to take a look at that on a graphing calculator. We input the function. We said uh, y is equal to negative 10. Again, make sure it is a negative and not a subtraction sign. The Texas Instrument Calculator will not like that. So now divided by. Now I have an older version. You might have a newer version calculator. If yours just does the fraction bar, you're good. Put everything you need underneath. Mine just has the slash, so I have to put parentheses here. x squared plus x plus 4, close. Take a look at our window, fix it from last time, negative 10, 10 by 1s. Take a quick look at what this looks like. Not too bad. You might see if we can narrow this down though. So window, if I change this to negative 8, to 8 by 1s, and then the y's from negative 4 to 4 by 1s. And before I graph this, I want to go back to the y equals. Now for the inequality, we're going to go all the way to the left over to here and highlight this, and then we'll hit enter to see some other options. So one, pressing enter once, 
allows us to make the line thicker, which could be helpful if we're trying to input a couple different functions and we want to be able to distinguish. I know some of the more modern calculators have different colors, which also helps. If I press again, notice now this time it's shaded above. That would be a Y is greater than situation. And that's what we have here. We have Y is greater than. So that's the one I want to choose. And I'm going to hit graph. So if we're representing this, I would want to do this and have that shading with the one exception of our boundary curve here. It should be dotted for our purposes and the calculator here does not have that option. So we would just make that dotted. So perhaps something that looks like this with the appropriate shading. All right, example number four, solving a system of linear inequalities we do so by graphing and this type of problem sets us up for the next lesson uh, beginning with the first two we've got x is greater than or equal to zero vertical line shade right and then y is greater than or equal to zero horizontal shade up so if we combine those two essentially we are talking about uh, the first quadrant but also uh, the axis here and the axis there, so the positive side of both of those axes. Now for this one, yeah, there are multiple ways of doing this. I think I'm going to do this by finding intercepts, cover-up method. If I cover up here, I'm going to find the x-intercept, pretending this is equals 6x equals 36, so x is 6. And then same thing here, y is 3 draw my line, it's going to be solid. I would test 0 comma 0. Is 0 less than or equal to 36? Yes. So I want to shade the side the origin is, which in this case is going to be below. And then this one, again, cover up. X-intercept is 4. Cover up. The Y-intercept is 5. And if we plug in zero for both, that one's also true, so we would shade inside. So the region that satisfies all four requirements is right here. Any point in here, and since these are solid lines, any one of these on the border also works. Those are all of our solutions to this system. we might apply this uh, if we say that Jimmy has inherited $10,000 and he plans to invest some and when we mean some that means up to everything that he has uh, of his inheritance he wants to invest at least a thousand dollars in bonds and separately mutual funds he wants to invest at least twice as much in bonds as mutual funds all right so in other situations uh, we may choose different variables like B and M or something like that just to connect to the problem. But as we are going to graph this and have points that are X coordinates and Y coordinates, we really recommend you use X and Y. So let X be the amount that we're going to invest in bonds. Y is the amount that we're going to invest in mutual funds. Uh, if you didn't know, mutual funds are just a collection of different people throwing money in and using all that money to invest in the stock market if you don't have enough on your own. So these are gonna be inequalities. Clearly, we can't invest negative. So X has to be greater than or equal to zero. Y has to be greater than or equal to zero. We don't always specifically write those, uh, but those are definitely implied. We have his inheritance, so the amount plus the amount cannot exceed this. He may decide not to invest all of it, so it has to be less than or equal to the 10000 And then he wants to invest at least twice as much in bonds as mutual funds. Oh, we've got the, the $1,000 minimum. I forgot about that. So X has to be greater than or equal to 1000 Y has to be greater than or equal to 1000 and the amount in bonds is greater than or equal to two times the amount in mutual funds. All right, so we need to graph those. So 
So notice here that this is 10,000. So each of these boxes is going to be worth $1,000. And it is labeled on the x axis the same. So if we do the cover up, x equals 10,000, y equals 10,000. So x intercept, y intercept, less than or equal is going to be shade inside. We'll get to the shading in a bit. X is greater than or equal to 1,000. Vertical at 1,000, shade to the right. Y is greater than or equal to 1,000. Horizontal, shade above. Now this one's a little bit tricky because it's not in the form that we're kind of used to. We may want to solve this for Y and say y is equal, y is less than or equal to one half x with the y intercept at zero and a slope of uh, one half, and it's a thousand and two thousand still creates one half since the scale is the same in both directions. And that's how we would get that one. And as far as if we are going y is less than or equal to one half x, we're going to shade below on that one. So here is the region that represents all of the solutions to what he can invest in under all of those conditions. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.